Like, it, this is cook that game. It's not assemble that game. Assemble that game from your yeah. local deli. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, not so fun. And welcome back to How to Cook. This week we're going to be cooking up Ticket to Ride Europe. Specifically Ticket to Ride Europe. Europe. Out of the 17-ish million versions of Ticket to Ride that now exist. Yeah, somewhere between 17 to 18 million. It's quite versions. a lot. And we need to get the cuisine right or this will not be an authentic cooking experience. Which is what we're all about. We are super authentic. Except that time when we made um, Viking cornbread. That was the one time we were inauthentic. It'll never happen again. It'll happen again. It'll probably happen in about five minutes. Mm, yeah. Just, just stick, stick with us. So I'm Tazia and this is Sam. Um, we've been cooking and friending together for some time now. So yeah. come with us on an adventure where we figure out how to cook Ticket to Ride Europe. Yeah. So, I mean, let's get it out of the way straight up. Anything we, need, we make would need to be acceptable to the boys. The boys. The boys need to be into whatever we cook. It seems like only respectful, yeah. you know, to the boys back at the office. That is true. Um, they were a crucial part of Jack's victory, so whatever we prepare needs to feed the boys, the boys. back at the office. Something pink. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to just, ooh, yeah, that's the point. Do we need to do something pink? I don't know. I'm not against mm. it. I'm not, I'm not against it. Let's put a little well, peg in that. Let's, let's put a pen in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you did the research the last time we did an episode of this. I've done the research th this time. And discovered that there is, in fact, a bit of an arc to the history of train food. I don't know why, I just... It's a thing. I don't That's know. an arc. It's an arc. I made... Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, the arc of train food. Hit me. Which is now a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. They, yep. Head cannon accepted. <laughs> uh, so, when, like, train travel first started being a thing, it was very much about freight rather than people. Yes. So there was no real consideration given to what people would eat on trains. Ah, so nice. people just kind of brought like picnic baskets with them basically for whatever would travel well that they could eat on the train. Then when you sort of get into about the turn of the 20th century, when rail travel was getting really big, you had your rail, like big rail pioneers, the people who built things like the Orient Express, realized that there was this potential for fine dining. So you would have Ooh. like souffles and lobster thermidor and everything served with champagne. I'm speaking my language. Yeah, right? So, and then as you sort of move into the late 20th century, when we get to this this bit of the arc. This. So we've had this bit of the arc, this bit of the arc, we're now into this bit of the arc. The descent. Arc. We've got to consider the, the geometry of the arc is very important. Mm. Like, you don't need to convince me I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you get into that, that second half of the 20th century where everything became about automobiles and plane travel mm -hmm. and train travel wasn't sort of the luxury thing it was at the start of the 20th century, that is where we move into like frozen meals and canned oh, things. Oh, no and, way. Like, if, yeah. you, if you've ever traveled on a, on a train in the UK, first of all, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a horrible thing that's happened to you and you have my very deep sympathies. But, like, you will have a dining car and it's, like, crisps and, like, a bacon buddy that's been sitting in a warmer for three months and, <laughs> like, cans of, cans of cheap Seems lager. Seems safe. <laughs> Can, cans of cheap lager and, yeah, you know, bad sandwiches that are pre packs like. Yeah. So, I mean, let's, because we're talking about Ticket to Ride, which is really set at that early age of, of train travel, I feel like we don't worry about more recent train fare. Totally. Also, because be. that would be really depressing. That would be depressing. To make prepackaged sandwiches, very old bacon buddies, and uh, cans of cheap lager. And we focus a bit more on either that very early period of rail travel, where we have like your picnic basket. Picnics, uh, yeah, like, I'm, that I'm did just, spark a couple ideas this, that's for me. Cool. Or we go super fancy eating and do like lobster thermidor or something. Yeah. I kind of like fancy eating. The idea of like eating fancy on a train mm. and doing something that's really like not what we consider fancy now, but what was considered mm. fancy at the like at that time. Yeah, like right? the, the 1900s through the 1920s, like golden age of rail. Yeah. When that, that was the... Um, yeah, like always just super fancy thing there. Although, counterpoint, 
if we do that early picnic basket style of food, we need something that travels well and could make hardtack. Yeah. You know how I feel about hardtack. I know how you feel I'm about really hardtack. I'm really keen. Yeah, we are passionate about hardtack. About hardtack. Here at, here at Cook That Game, we're about that hardtack life. It's like, the is that from Annie or Oliver? Or which musical has like hard knock life? It's like oh, the hard like, tack life. Yes, the hard tack life. That was a gloriously laboured joke. You're welcome. Um, look, hard tack is basically like shittier lembas bread. <laughs> I mean, and I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, look, it's it's filling in travels well over long journeys. It's just not magical and made by elves. It has not been gifted to us by Galadriel. But really, what has? Lembas bread. Other than Lembus bread. Oh, nothing. Exactly. Damn it. Cool. Glad, um, we, glad we resolved this. <laughs> okay. Back on the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got off the train a little bit there. Just flang ourselves into a field for a little while. Yeah, like, like doopy doo. It's how we do. Um, yes. So, if we were going picnic, mm-hmm. would you take hard tech? Though, like, I mean, probably not. I just do feel I just like want to point... shoehorn the hard tack into? Obviously, Obviously. At, this, at this stage, I think every episode of this, we need to find a way to shoehorn hard tack in there. It is known. As opposed to shoehorning hard tack into your shoes, which would be a bad idea. I do not want that. <laughs> shoes full of hard tack. For science. Yes. All right. Okay, so... so, are we thinking something kind of picnicky, or are we thinking something kind of fancy? Or do we want to try for some sort of fancy picnic? I my brain just went fancy picnic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are we are on the same page. It's a, yeah. a page with fancy picnics. It's a fancy picnic page. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um Is there something okay, fancy picnic. Okay. And European fancy picnic. Mm. Um like, how... my brain keeps going to lobster. Yes, I know. Like, <laughs> and you can, you can, could we, like, try to do some sort of lobster thermidor roll? Yeah, we could definitely do something. Like, I don't actually, I, I confess, I've never eaten lobster thermidor, and I don't know what the thermidor part of the lobster <laughs> thermidor is. Fair. So, it's can, kind we, of... can we get some lobster and some thermidor? <laughs> I think so. It's kind of like lobster with, like, a sauce. I, I feel like you could probably take the flavours and put it on there. Yeah, okay. Um, is there cheese? I feel like there's probably I cheese. I feel like it's a cheese sauce. Yep. I feel like I learned to make it once. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It's not really something that's actually made anymore. It probably is in, like, French hotels. <laughs> um, <laughs> French hotels. French hotels. I'm very sorry, Franz. That was, that was uncalled for. I take it back. You taught me much of what I know French cooking. Yeah, look, as we've discussed before, Tazia is the actually talented chef of this here show. I'm just some dude what cooks some food and plays on the Fancy cook games. human. Yeah, look, I, I do. Last okay. night you made feta stuffed kangaroo burgers. It's kind of fancy. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. fancy. Yeah. Going out in a limb and calling it fancy. Yeah. Um, just in case this is the first time anyone watching from overseas has heard, we do in fact eat kangaroo here in Australia and it's delicious. And if you find that weird, then, you know, that's... Um, yeah, our national animal was really tasty. Yeah, so. pretty much. Both of them, actually. Yeah. Emu was also really good. I don't think I've had emu. I've had emu egg, which was strange. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. We're getting off track. I think we are wildly, wildly <laughs> we, off we, track. We are just off track. We have, in fact, derailed and <laughs> crashed horribly and destructively. You know that moment when you're, like, on the train in the movie and then you realise that the bridge is broken and you're going to, yeah. like, careen into the... That's yeah. what I'm doing right now. Okay. Um, and you're just perpetuating it with yeah. this entire side. Perfect. Awesome. So, fancy food in a picnic. What about just actually making a fancy, like, thing and putting it in a picnic basket? That doesn't quite work. Yeah, I don't know. I could, I could happily just lower a, a souffle into the picnic basket it and, would then, end, oh. and lift it out of the picnic basket. I, I do quite like the idea of like you've made something fancy at home and you've packed it. Like so something yeah. that would travel but it's using like, you know, really fancy mm. ingredients could be yeah. quite fun. I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, I like, could we do something where we pick maybe like two different cuisines? Like, oh, yeah, you know, so like, say you're going from London to Paris, like, get a bit pan European, about yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And be like, yeah, yes, we're going to visit mm. our cousins in Paris, so we bought some comfort food 
and like mm. something to get us in the mood. I don't know. Maybe maybe not London to Paris because no. British cuisine a la the early 20th century was not a time. Not about that life. Not so much. Um, I know you are quite familiar with French and Italian cuisines. That is true. Cuisines. Yes, I love both of those deeply. Um, you can also look at Spanish. Yes. Italians definitely got a lot of great, like, deli kind of things. Mm. Um, but I'm trying to think of what is something that you would make. Because, like, the first thing that springs yeah. to my mind is, like, cheese and salumi and, like, those sort yeah. of small goods that you can make, but probably not of an evening. Mm. Um, and I feel like we can't just, like, if this is cook that game. It's not assemble that game. Assemble that game from your yeah. local deli. Yeah, exactly. Um, not so fun. Let's take a meander away from the picnic idea for a moment and okay. see if we want to yeah. do something just... A bit fancy. Fancy. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I guess, like, your, cl your classic high-end fine dining of this era is French. It's right? true. Like, that French dining and, you know, high-end high dining are kind of synonymous in that early 20th century yeah. period, I think. Something does deeply appeal to me about the idea of bringing out a wobbly fresh souffle on a train. <laughs> like, it just they seems they did ludicrous learn. though, right? It's yeah. beautiful. And like somebody bringing it to you on a train carriage and like pouring a hot sauce on your yeah. souffle, like. Well, like channel, I, I guess the thing here is like channel your inner Agatha Christie and yeah. your Hercule, yeah, Hercule Poirot. Like what, what would you want to be served on your Agatha Christie murder mystery. Before game. the murder has Before been announced. Murder, obviously. What are we eating? <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Um, yes. I mean, do we yeah, do you're, a souffle? You're, 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 I feel like we do a souffle. I think we need to do a souffle. Yeah. Like, obviously, your pre murder and post murder dinners are radically different. Yes. True. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's put that aside for now. I do love the idea of souffle. I've never cooked a souffle, so I'm, <gasps> I'm excited by the prospect I of souffle. I have cooked so many, but it's been like a bunch of years. So yeah, it'd be okay. really fun for me to revisit that, actually. Nice. Yeah. Um, if we were going to do something before that, mm -hmm. what do we do? Um, I still kind of love the idea of like a, a fancy lobster roll. A fancy lobster roll seems pretty fun. Yeah. Particularly if we... I don't know if we'd have time to make the bread rolls. Mm. Like, do, like, a nice brioche roll. It will kind of depend how much time we have when we when we go to cook. and Could be fun, city. though. Yeah. Like, yeah. If, if not, I think we definitely need to get brioche. Yes. Like, that is that is the suitably fans. 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 Um, yes, okay, so some kind of roll yep. with lobster. Yep. Seems fun. Um, if we are going mediumly kind of conservative in our flavors i guess mm. it is you know you're not going to be putting avocado on there no right like, so well it's kind of like where i like the idea of like a lobster thermidor roll whatever mm. that ends up looking like like, like we'll need yeah. to do some research into like i think you're right lobster thermidor is like based on a sauce and i think it's got like breadcrumbs and yeah stuff like i feel that. like if i remember rightly it's kind of broiled but like maybe i'm getting different lobster dishes confused sure. in my brain um Okay, lobster flavors that I think are really nice is like, like a sauce, but maybe made with some white wine. It's yep. some really delicate herbs. Um, well, can we could we rather than making the sauce with white wine, make it with some sparkling? Because oh yeah, again, like your your premium era of rail travel, like everything was champagne. Everything is champagne. Yes, we will probably not get actual champagne. Actual champagne. Because that's ridiculous. That's a little bit excessive, but we can get some very nice Australian sparkling that will take its place. Yeah. I think that could be cool. I like that. Yep. I like that a lot. And like, yeah, some, just some lovely sort of fresh herbs, maybe like mm. dill or some such. Yeah. Parsley maybe. Parsley, always parsley, classic. Oh, parsley yep. always good. Really nice. Um, what? Just trying to think. I want something that's like a little pickled or a little crisp or a little like something like okay. that, but it needs to be not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Necessarily yeah. Mm. what we would do. Watercress. I feel like I think is a thing that is done. Pickled in watercress? No, no, just no, just fresh watercress. Okay, that, like Sorry, your brain was like, second. oh loud. I mean I know last time we pickled berries, that <laughs> blew true. my mind. It's good that you could pick it was delicious, but I'm like, you can pickle berries and then of course I'm just gonna take you seriously anytime you bring so up pickling something. You can something. pickle everything. True. Like, We're gonna pickle the champagne. <laughs> 
That's that so was cool. not taking me seriously, Paulson. <laughs> no, look, fair. I have, okay. I, have, I have suggested something that I've let you down. I apologise. All right. So we're thinking lobster. Yep. On a beautiful roll. Yep. Of a brioche variety. Yep. Um, a Hell lovely yeah. sauce that is sort of bechamel, but with some sparkling wine, yep. which yep. kind of puts it in a velouté territory. Yep. We could possibly, if we poach the lobster, depending on how we want to cook it, we could use a little bit of that poaching liquid for flavour in the that is true. stock as well. Yep. Um, yeah. I think that could be really nice. And maybe some watercress if we can find some. some. I mean, if we want to get like some Germanic influence in there, that's where mm. you can kind of get your pickles from. Yeah, I think that could or, be. Or um, pickles are really big in like, uh, the Netherlands and sort of up into, uh, up into Scandinavia. Yes. So like there is a strong pickling tradition in, pickling tradition. in, in Northern Europe. Truth. So we could look at that. And then what kind of souffle? Are we thinking a sweet souffle or a savoury souffle? I think definitely sweet if we are doing a savoury yep. roll, something to like come out afterwards and something that we can like add a sauce to, I think is super yeah. nice and dramatic, right? If you're trying True. to impress your yep. guests. Oh, a souffle that I would really love to do, and I'd have to see if I can find the recipe, but we used to do this butterscotch, no, um, mm -hmm. like a sort of butterscotchy souffle. But what was really cool about it was it had very minimal ingredients, but you used brown sugar instead of white sugar oh, and some butterscotch okay. schnapps in. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, right? Cool. And it got this like toffee kind ofness to it. Well, and the, the other idea I had, if we wanted to actually have a bit of British influence after I've thrown shade on your turn of the century Such cooking shade. Britain, I don't really take it back, honestly. Like there was, we boiled a lot of things. It was, it wasn't great. You should... You're better now, I will say. You have yeah, a much better incredible. cuisine now. Amazing cuisine. Just early 20th century. Mm. Um, but like a berry souffle. Like oh, yeah. A, a raspberry or a blackberry souffle could be really nice. Could be really beautiful. Like I really sort of associate those kind of berries with like late winter, early spring. Pink. And pink. For the boys. There, you go. Bring, there we go. We brought it full circle. We've got pink souffle for the boys. So yeah. like, like a raspberry souffle. Yeah, I think raspberry sounds beautiful. Um, and what kind of sauce we want to pair with it? That's the question. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if there could be... Who, who is currently unloved in our, our gastronomic tour of, of Europe? Many, many places. Yeah, true. Uh, we've not um, done anything Spanish. Are there like some, some Spanish sweet sauces we could... Definitely. I'm, def I'm trying to think of like flavours that you want to put with raspberry. True. And it is going to be like sweet raspberry because you, you put a decent amount of sugar in the yeah, souffle. Yeah. Um, I mean, raspberry and chocolate is beautiful. Raspberry and chocolate is always amazing. It and then really we have some, some Switzerland. That's true. Yeah, bring, bring the Swiss into there. Bring, yeah. yeah. Not averse. So like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so let's step it out. So we have our delicious lobster roll mm -hmm. with lobster and watercress and a white sauce that's, that's slightly champagne-based. Yep. Um, maybe some pickles if we feel Possibly like that something action, will... we can look into it. And then we follow that with our raspberry souffle with chocolate sauce. Sounds incredible. This sounds decidedly incredible. The level of fans. So fans. High. Such fans. We are fancy humans. It's true. Yep. They would, they would permit us to serve food on a turn of the century train. That's all I'm saying. Like we would serve this to guests and they'd be like, wow, that is quite fans. They He's probably wouldn't. The train. They probably wouldn't have actually said fans. I feel like that's like a, a modern thing to. Maybe. Short, shorten an already short word. Much like Quite unnecessary. the tack of previous conversations, we're gonna shoehorn it in. There. That is true. Do you right. reckon we can like maybe set up a thing so that this table just kind of slightly wobbles for authenticity? <laughs> I don't know. We will look into it. We will look into so, it. So I mean, Do you have a I table feel, I feel like we might be slightly busy doing the actual cooking. But if we have time, we can always get our director and just have him sit under the table and just wobble, wobble it, it continuously. So if you <laughs> if you see that table wobbling... Shout out to Glenn. Shout out to Glenn. <laughs> okay. I think we have a plan. I think we have a plan. I think it's a very good plan. I think it's a very it's, delicious plan. Which is my favorite kind of plan. It is about the best kind of plan you're going to get. Cool. Okay. Lock it in. Let's lock it in. We will get to cooking this and we will see you back here... 
shortly. Well, hello there. Oh, hi. So, things went slightly different to plan. Just a, just a tad. Talk us, talk us through the amended plan. So... Keeping in mind that this is only part one. Of two. Yes, there of, is a, of two. There is a second part, so you will get a second dramatic walk-on in the same video. We spoil you, dear viewers. We spoil you. You're welcome. I mean, we spoil ourselves with these lobster rolls as well. Literally lobster. Yep. In these rolls. So, uh, yeah, no, fairly, fairly like we talked about. Um, the main difference is that we were not able to source any watercress. So I made the executive decision to do some really beautifully thinly sliced fennel. Um, which will... I'm not mad about it. No, it's good. And like, because we were already planning to put some tarragon in the sauce, those flavors kind of balance out together. Mm. Um, and... So give us a description, but a very quick description. Because you want to... I want this in my face. Your whole face hole. Yeah. Alrighty, well, we got some lobster, we made the lobster, we made a sauce, we put the sauce around the lobster, we put it in a roll that was buttered and toasted, and then we topped it with thinly sliced fennel and herbs, and now we're gonna eat it. We're gonna eat it? We're gonna eat it! Let's eat it! Let's eat it! Oh my word. Oh damn. Oh hot damn. Mmm, fresh damn. Hot like, fresh dam. Hot fresh dam, straight out of the oven. Yep. Yep. Straight I'm into going but... straight into our faces. Mmm. Mmm. Like a lady. Okay, so <clears throat> let me tell you a story of the flaves I'm getting here. Like I'm getting that rich butteriness from the brioche. Mmm. Just a real sort of nice herby creaminess with a really good strong lobster flavor mm. all about that lobster flavor and just some nice the fennel's got a really nice crunch to it yeah which i think i'm actually more excited about this than i probably would have been about the watercress i'm loving that texture yes and the watercress does have a little crispness but this is like next level crisp mm. now if i recall correctly some of this fancy sparkling wine what is in front of both of us is also in, in this, this sauce. sauce so clearly i now need to drink some of this fancy sparkling wine Sparkling affordability. Mm. Absolute. Mm. That's real nice. It's lovely. It's delightful. And it goes fantastically with lobster rolls. You will note the table is not rocking. Like it's it's quite a quite a solid piece of wood. It would have it would have ended poorly. I blame Glenn. God damn it, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Glenn, for the record, is our director and editor who is standing right behind the right camera. Right behind there. So unimpressed with us right now. <laughs> I assume he's also unimpressed because we promised to feed him lobster rolls as part of being here to film. And the longer we talk, the longer he has to wait before he, he can have a lobster roll. roll. <laughs> so, we're just going to wrap this. Wrapping it, wrapping it. We're going to eat our delicious lobster you know rolls. And we will be back in, like, probably about 15 minutes for us, about two seconds for you, for you. bearing souffles. Oh, I'm just going to do a sneaky bit of lobster without the roll. Oh, yeah. Do it. Mm. So good. It really is beautiful. Like, so sweet. We didn't get them um, live. We just got some, like, fresh frozen lobster. And I was a little bit concerned about how it would turn out, but it's actually beautiful. And they are Australian lobsters. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We'll be back in a second. A second walk on. That is, in our second episode, a record number of walk-ons. Does this mean we have to do a matching number of walk-ons for every That could episode? escalate very quickly. Let's not lock that in. Let's probably not. All right, now we get to do a little drama. And you have to imagine we are on a train with Du Bois, and a server has brought this over to us. Sorry, Sue <laughs> <laughs> And they are... For illustrative purposes only. ...carving a little hole in the top. Ooh. Like so, okay. if you would like to do this... I would, I would love to do for this. ...for yours. It is such a long time since I've had a souffle. We are having our gorgeous raspberry chocolate sauce. Yep. We're gonna put. Although these are not, as was originally planned, raspberry souffles. Raspberry souffles, but rather strawberry souffles. Still P. 
pink train themed. Yep, they are still drama. In... Oh, oh wow, that's very exciting. So being pink, they are still fully acceptable to the boys. The boys. Uh, Back and, at the office. And this is fully acceptable to me right here at Cook That Game. Oh, and look at it go down. Oh, oh my god. Ready? Yep. Going in. Going in. Oh, yeah. Oh, really, yeah. That's what I'm talking that's, um, about. That's a real good souffle. That if is... you want more chalk, there is chalk Ooh, for days. Yeah. I, You know me, I always want more chalk. This is like sweet and it's got some of those nice bitter notes mm. and it's got that rich berry flavor. It is so fluffy. There is basically, mm. I'm going to be unable to talk much more this episode because I'm going to be very busy eating this um. amazing souffle. So I will conclude by saying that this has been Du Bois train picnic that we have prepared for you today. This is how you cook Ticket to Ride Europe. Thank you for watching Cook That Game. Do all the YouTube things. Like, share, subscribe. Follow us on social media. And we will see you at the table. Sam, put the souffle in your mouth.